Welcome to another episode of content where we'll be looking at a short story from this volume, Where Do We Go From Here, edited by Isaac Asimov. The short story in question this time is And He Built a Crooked House by Robert A. Heinlein. And I gotta tell you, this is easily one of my favorite short stories so far ever. And I don't know what it is. Part of it may just be down to the fact that doing some creative work about uh, fourth dimensional geometry and a sort of a mad inventor, architect, designer kind of character. I don't know what part of that appeals to me the most, whether or not it's creative play with fourth dimensional geometry or it's a mad inventor who accidentally creates a thing that shouldn't be possible. Maybe it's how they work together. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I love about this story so much other than I love the story. Now, the thing that really caught me first off is it really sets it up as a uh, just sort of like these two guys hanging out in California drinking and sort of like poking at each other, one with more money than he knows what to do with, and the other guy who has the ability to get things done. And they're kind of griping about how, you know, the world has got this problem, or this is another problem, or like people are so inefficient about how they do this thing or that thing. And that's sort of like a classic character story trope of just two guys sitting around drinking and arguing about how inefficient the world is at doing such and such. But you have a guy with the money to make these things happen and the guy with the chutzpah to imagine he could make anything happen if he wants to do it. And they're drunk enough to not back down from a challenge once it's proposed. So they agree to give it a try. And, I mean, it's it's sort of just like a fun thing to start with, but then they actually take it to the point where, like, they skip over the actual doing of most of it. And, uh, essentially, what, what the story talks about is a guy who proposes that he could build a house in the shape of a tesseract. Now, they're not so delusional to think that they could actually build an actual tesseract, they're talking about it as being the most efficient way of doing that. They're drunk enough. One of them's saying like, oh yeah, it makes perfect sense. We should totally be doing things like that. And the other guy says like, you know, it's not actually possible to do that. And you just wait and you see, but they actually come to a point where he's trying to explain fourth dimensional cubes, hypercubes to this other guy. What the, the architect character understands the concept and actually explains it really decently for the first part of the story. It's one of the best examples of talking about hypergeometry in a short story I've seen. Um, but in talking about how one would visualize in three dimensions the fourth dimensional geometry of a hypercube, uh, they come on to the idea of like, well, you don't have to make something geometrically impossible to make that happen. You can actually write, you, you could actually build a design that's the three dimensional extrapolation of a hypercube, which is a square base that goes up several stories and part way up has cubes sticking out further than the width of the base. It's it's cantilevered over over the open area. And that's that's an achievable design. And so they're like, okay, so like set realistic expectations. Can you do that? And so he wants to go do this and the other guy has the funds to do it. And so they just sort of on a dare, can you do this? And so he he takes the story from that point and says like, and they did it quickly because when you're, when you're motivated and you know how to do things in California, you can get a lot done really fast. And they forward to introducing this house 
And the entry, like, it looks, he feels like he's robbed because when they get there, there's only the first floor. Where's the rest of the house that's supposed to be built above it? And so apparently what had happened is an earthquake caused it to actually fold up into the fourth dimension. Of course, that doesn't really happen, but just like a, a willingness, uh, the, the willing suspension of disbelief that can happen in a lot of science fiction stories, I can kind of let that go and it works out in the story's frame of reference. So I kind of dig that. That worked. I'm able to go that far. Once they get into the house and they get trapped, I'm still having a, you know, I can kind of let that go. Um, I feel like, I feel like there's a little bit of like, you got a little further out into the fantastical with some of that. First of all, as a design person, the idea of an electronic staircase that folds down at the push of a button is just, I'm sure somebody's done it. It's a stupid design. You don't need to be doing that. But uh, I kind of get what they were trying to do with this story where you're, you're in a single room with no s sign of other floors to get to. And then you make those entrances appear. When they move from one frame of... Uh, fourth dimensional space to another i feel like he the explanation the ability to detail it in the story starts to break down but not in a super negative way like most people wouldn't notice it me being me i feel like i'm inclined to say like well i would do it this way instead and i would say this and i would line it up this way it's when they really start to get to the point where they start to explore the idea of being trapped in the building and all attempts to leave one of the square rooms opens up areas to random, like there's no reason why a building in California should lead to a, a, a certain space above a skyscraper in New York City. There, there's no part of the geometry that makes that a plausible outcome. And at that point, it's clear he's just doing an Alice in Wonderland spoof where he's gotten weird and just illustrating the absurdity of the idea that he's trying to propose. And it doesn't have to be that way. The story could take the concept more seriously and illustrate it in a informative way about how that geometry would work. But that's just me being a nitpicky little twerp about a story that I enjoyed greatly. I think if I were to do something in this realm of a story like this, I'd be more inclined to say that as three-dimensional beings, our ability to currently perceive fourth-dimensional aspects are complicated, but not necessarily not there. I feel like if we were to start to talk about a realistic way of kind of pretending that the fourth, exploring our ability to perceive fourth dimensional differences, it would sort of be like an overlay of two different images happening at the same time in the same space. And maybe even red shifting and blue shifting as Fourth dimensional geometry tends to look at um, direct the, the direction of fourth dimension as just as a frame being able to say red or blue versus uh, say the y axis being left or right or the, the z axis being forward and back or the x axis being up and down. You do up, down, left, right, forward, back red blue is what we tend to refer to and in that case what you visually you would probably lay it over as um looking at an image that's red shifted and an image that is blue shifted 
occupying the same space, but they're different directions. Now, consciously walking into that, you'd have to perceive a way of walking into the blue direction rather than the red direction. And I don't know that as humans, we've got that figured out yet. So yes, it might be a little frustrating to not be able to consciously choose which one you're going into, but it should be more in the realm of a binary choice, not this random New York City versus Joshua Tree uh, National Forest uh, suddenly walking out into these weird environments. Um, so there's there's that aspect to it that I would maybe do differently, but that's just me being nitpicky. I loved this story. This is a really fun and interesting story, and I love the concept of it. And it leads me to some ideas for creating some new content that I will cover in the next video following this one. So if you're ready for that, join me over in the next video, and I will see you there for it. And take care and have a good night. Yeah. I, are we, would you please work with me? End the video.